Good morning, Brooks. Um, wow, thank you, Philip, Laura, Dr. Bruschi, Nathaniel. That was amazing. Matthias, I'm sorry, Nathaniel's in Whitney. So sorry. Sorry, Matthias. Um, good morning. So um, I am up here, and I am following in the theme that you all are with your Wilder speeches on empathy. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Arts Department and the Robert Lehman Art Center Gallery. Just curious, how many of you have spent time in our beautiful gallery adjacent to the library? Excellent. Um, I want you to know that if you have not, or it's been a while, we have a pretty cool exhibition that's in the Lehman right now. The works in the gallery are by William Bill Ferris, class of 1960. If you can do the math, he's 80 years old and he's remarkable. This exhibition to honor Black History Month is comprised of 70 photographs and a range of interactive media from his books and publications, Give My Poor Heart Ease, Voices of the Mississippi Blues, The Storied South, Voices and Writers and Artists, The South in Color, a visual journal, and Voices of Mississippi, Artists and Musicians. This work was gifted from the artist to the Robert Lehman Art Center's permanent collection. William Bill Ferris, Brooks class of 1960, was born in Vicksburg, Mississippi in 1942. Fun fact, Vicksburg, Mississippi is also the birthplace to Coca-Cola. And it's also the location of the TV version of Why the Caged Bird Sings, which was read beautifully by, last week by my advisee, Nikki Shoko. It's also the location of the Grammy and Academy Award winning movie, Oh Brother, Where Art, Art Thou, if you've seen that. Um, and it helps paint a picture for where Bill Ferris was born and raised. So raised on a family farm and raised in an anti-segregationist family who found his way to Brooks in the late 50s. Um, while at Brooks School in the 50s, William Bill Ferris began a pattern of recording and photographing um, musicians each time he returned to his family farm. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, he toured his home state of Mississippi documenting the voices of African Americans as they spoke about and performed the diverse musical traditions that form the authentic root of the blues. Could we play the first video? As you can see, Bill Ferris is a photographer, a filmmaker, an artist, and a storyteller. He's in his seventh decade of documenting the South. An American author and scholar and former chairman of the National Endowment for the Humanities, that was under President Clinton's leadership, he co-founded the Center for Southern Folklore in Memphis, Tennessee, was the founding director of the Center for the Study of Southern Culture at the University of Mississippi, and is the co-editor of the Encyclopedia of Southern Culture. A man of many accomplishments, Bill Ferris also has the titles of Joel R. Williamson Eminent Professor of History and Senior Associate Director of the Center for the Study of the American South, Emeritus at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. He's the author and photographer of the books I mentioned before, which are also available in the gallery, um, signed, and they are signed copies. In 2019, he won two Grammys, um, awards for Voices of the Mississippi, a box set. How many of you watched the Grammys last night or saw clips on your social media reel? Um, he uh, was awarded, you might not recognize um, the artists that were nominated in his category, but how cool is it for him to win not only one, but two Grammys in 2019? He won for Best Historical Album and Best Album Notes. And just so you know, I was thrilled that last night's 2023 awards went to Wilco um, for the 20th anniversary of um, their album, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. So if you don't know Wilco, it's another great band to check out. Um, most recently, Bill was awarded the 2022 Pathfinder Award at the Mississippi Civil Rights Museum Annual Champions of Justice. At 80 years old, William Ferris and his work continue to reflect through the eyes and heart of an engaged artist, communicating, empathizing with integrity, compassion, creativity, and courage. Bill Ferris embodies our Brooks School core values. Here's a video about. We are delighted to exhibit his gifts to the Lehman Arts Center with an interactive exhibition to honor Black History Month. This exhibition is on view now until April 31st. This collection of Ferris's photography and media, which is co-curated with um, May Eggleston, our own May Eggleston, um, puts front and center a searing selection of the artistically and emotionally rich voices from his invaluable docu documentary record. Ferris's photographs of the musicians and their communities are part of a collection of books and documentaries featuring interviews 
relating frank, dramatic, and engaging narratives about black life and blues music in the heart of the American South. When in the gallery, I encourage you to please use the digital displays to engage in the online components of this photography exhibit. Included in the digital formats are the stories of artists who have long memories and speak eloquently about their lives, blues musicians who represent a wide range of musical traditions, from one-stranded instruments, bottle blowing, to banjo, and spirituals, um, hymns, and also prison work chants. Celebrities such as B.B. King and Willie Dixon, along with performers known best in their neighborhoods express the full range of human artistic experience, joyful and gritty, raw and painful. To help you get a feel for the true good human that Bill is, I share with you a quote from Bill Ferris. I began taking photographs at the age of 12 when I was given a Kodak box camera with a flash attachment for Christmas. I took my first black and white photographs of my family and my grandmother, Hester Flowers' Christmas dinner table in Vicksburg, Mississippi, shortly after unwrapping the box in which my camera came. I later took photographs of Rose Hill Church baptisms in Hammer Bayou and in a pond near the church. And I took photographs of my family at our home. The time span in my book is from the late 1960s through the 1970s. And as my work evolved, I returned each year to visit musicians who were my friends. I decided to change the book's perspective from that of a white scholar talking about music to that of black speakers describing their lives, how music shaped their worlds. This approach allowed me to focus on the rich language of each speaker and to capture each persona by using a series of dramatic monologues, a form that I discovered through the fiction of Ernest Gaines, Alice Walker, and Adora Welty. In an autobiographical introduction, Ferris reflects on how he fell in love with the vibrant musical culture that was all around him, but he collected, um, but he was confined and off limits to white Mississippi during a troubled era. This magnificent collection illuminates blues music and the broader African-American experience, and indeed the history and culture of America itself. Growing up in an isolated rural community with the black and white families who lived near my home shaped me in deep, lasting ways. Stories told by my grandfather, books read aloud by my mother, and hymns sung at Rose Hill Church are memories that to this day are incredibly vivid. These voices shape my identity in deep, lasting ways. What ultimately led me away from my family's farm was education, first to Brooks School in North Andover, Massachusetts, then to Davidson College in Davidson, North Carolina, and to Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, ultimately Trinity College in Dublin, Ireland, and then finally the University of Pennsylvania and Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. This man has several degrees, several. While these schools were far from my family's farm, each of their own way, each in their own way, helped me take, tack a course down Highway 61. While at Brooks School in the late 50s, he began a pattern of recording the musicians each time he returned. As a graduate student in folklore at the University of Pennsylvania in the late 60s, this work became a focus of his dissertation. It was also at the University of Pennsylvania that he began to use film to document the blues, worlds in which he found himself increasingly immersed. This is a quote that is also featured in the gallery. I learned the wisdom of my father's rule that you can learn a lesson from every person you meet in life. I learned that there is a timeless quality to the stories, their humor, their pathos, the moment they are recorded, photographed, or filmed. I also learned that moments captured through media are never fully heard or seen until later when the photograph is developed, the tape is played back, the film is viewed. Each time I hear these recordings, look at the photographs, or watch the films, I notice new details that remind me that these worlds of storytelling and music are richly textured and never stop speaking to me. When asked recently in an interview for the Washington Post, what advice would you offer a young folklorist or documentarian or anyone aware of a world waiting to be noticed, and Bill responded with this, I share with you as you participate in the Wilder Speaking Prize on empathy and reflect on the all-community read of the Midnight Library. My counsel to students is to follow your heart. If you love what you do, you will do it well. There are so many worlds waiting to be noticed. We simply have to open our hearts and our minds and listen to these voices who are waiting to speak with us. These voices are like signposts along a highway that will lead us on a journey of discovery. It's exciting to pursue this work, to throw your full energy into capturing and understanding the worlds you pursue. The work will become a lifelong journey and will shape you in lasting ways. It makes you a better, more sensitive person. 
as you learn to walk in the shoes of others, you experience the double consciousness that blacks have understood for generations. Brooks School and the Robert Lehman Art Center are incredibly fortunate to have this collection of William Ferris's photography. As many of you know, especially now with cameras, really good cameras in your own pockets. Photography is part of our everyday. For Bill Ferris, the study of the places in which we live helps us deepen our roots and ground ourselves. He said that photography is a key to the South in every way we can imagine. The birth of photography as a new technology in mid-19th century during a time when the United States was grappling with the future of slavery and then was immersed in civil war, abolitionist and reformer Frederick Douglass at the time realized the power of photography to document the humanity of a people who had been enslaved and demeaned. The most photographed American in his era, Douglass lectured on how black lives are honored and preserved through photographs. This was important for Bill Ferris to acknowledge that Fredless, Frederick Douglass identified photography with freedom. He defined himself as a free man and a citizen as much through his portraits as through his words. His own freedom had coincided with the birth of photography and he became one of its greatest boosters. On Friday, February 17th at 7 p.m., you all have an opportunity to hear directly from Bill Ferris. We will gather in the Keating Room for a conversation with Bill. Until then, I encourage you to spend some time in the Lehman this month. See the faces, read the stories, hear the music. The Lehman Gallery is a beautiful place on campus, and we are fortunate to have this space, this collection, these stories. Thank you for engaging in the arts.